It's been a five year journey from Earth using El Cubier Drive and we're finally able to reach Kepler-186f. This planet that you see in front of you was the discovery of the century because it was the most Earth-like planet that we found in our galaxy. We've decided to launch the exploration ship with the small crew on board to try to establish a first interstellar colony. Today their journey begins with a landing on the surface. Welcome to What the Math. My name is Nikolai Arellano, I am the engineer of this mission. Our first few goals were to construct necessary modules for survival and the first module that we needed to construct was, was the airlock because we wanted to start a base where we could walk without our helmets. Now oxygen extraction was relatively simple, all we had to do was drill inside the planet and use electrolysis to separate the water ice into hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen would then be released into the atmosphere and oxygen would be stored inside our base. Uh, all of the assembly has actually been pre-planned and uh, stored inside our spaceship and all of these modules were uh, given to us by the international space community before our trip. The modules only took a few minutes to assemble and some of the bigger things like for example the solar panels would require a maximum of hour of assembly. We had to work fast because we needed not just oxygen and not just water but also electricity which was very important for our survival. While there was still sun in the air we needed to construct a large solar panel that I've decided to construct right here. As a main engineer of this mission I had the the decision making behind where to place different modules and what to construct first. Now we also needed to construct a very large electrical capacitor so that we could actually store this electricity overnight. I decided to make this double the original size because we will need a lot of electricity for our base to function. Now unfortunately we did not have water yet so we needed to construct a water extractor. Now we didn't really know much about the planet before we arrived into the solar system but what we do know now is that it doesn't have much oxygen. It does have water under the surface uh, mostly stored in ice so all we had to do to extract it was to try to drill um, deep into the ground and then melt it and transport it back to the surface. Uh, to do this we also needed a large water tank because we would want to store all of this water uh, for future use. Now we had the basic uh, base under operation, our airlock started to receive oxygen because all of the water that we managed to collect was uh, electrolyzed into oxygen and so we could now breathe on the surface as long as we stayed inside these modules. Now the first night arrived quite quickly. Nevertheless, we had our first base set up on another planet. We had water flowing, we had electricity, and we had electrical storage. We just needed to start making food because otherwise we are going to go hungry and perish. Now with my engineering experience, I knew that we needed to create more electricity. I decided to test faith and construct a wind turbine. This place seemed to have quite a lot of winds, even though this was carbon dioxide planet, just like on earth, the winds would actually rotate the blade of the turbine and produce electricity. I've decided to try this and construct a small turbine right here and see if it, it would actually produce more energy for us. And because it was nighttime, unfortunately the solar panels did not produce any more electricity and we were running out of energy relatively quick. If we run out of energy, we will not be able to produce any more oxygen or retrieve any more water and will unfortunately either die of thirst or suffocate. 
Now for this mission, we were actually given two standard construction bots that were te previously tested on planets like Mars. CNT2 was a construction bot that was absolutely brilliant. It could construct things relatively quickly, sometimes even faster than we would do it uh, ourselves. And our other friend, CR1, that we started to refer to as Jenny, was our carrier bot. She would carry almost everything in a relatively fast fashion and would actually be able to help us when it came to uh, retrieving things from dangerous situations or carrying large boxes to locations that we would not be able to reach otherwise. Now our first canteen was ready, um, but we were all hungry. We needed to construct something to produce food. Unfortunately, without that, we would not be able to use it to its full capacity. And while we were constructing our canteen, I realized that my plan worked. The wind turbine was working and producing quite a lot of electricity. We were now safe at night. We could use the turbine to produce just enough electricity for us to maintain the basic operation of the base and thus produce enough oxygen and water. The canteen was set up and we now had the water fountain, the food producer, and we were about to have a little table where we could actually finally sit down and eat. This was a marvel of interstellar uh, in exploration and we now have created our first miniature restaurant outside of planet Earth. But it's actually been two days now and we were getting really, really tired. I've decided that it was about time that we constructed some sort of a bunk so that we could actually start sleeping and resting by taking turns. Now this was a quite a close collision. Luckily, we survived. This planet is not as safe as we hoped it would be and a lot of the uh, meteorite collisions would actually possibly cause a lot of trouble for us in the future. We had to make sure that we're able to repair things really fast and for that we needed to make sure that we always have enough construction pieces for us to actually rebuild things. A few hours later we were able to construct our first biodome and start producing plants. We had mushrooms, we had some medicinal plants, and we also decided to produce maize or corn and of course radish because radish would grow relatively fast. Now this would provide us with some food but we now needed to produce a processor so that we can actually process this food into something edible. This wind turbine right here ended up being a lot more useful than I imagined and it managed to fill up our power collector to the max. However, at night we would actually have trouble and the night was coming relatively quick so we had to work fast. Second turbine had to come up super fast and we had to make sure that it does get completed before the complete darkness of the night. Luckily, we were able to finish the second turbine before what you would call midnight. Uh, the night has fallen, but we now had two turbines running full and we were collecting a lot more energy. This meant that our base could now actually produce new modules and we could now focus on possibly even starting a mine. The reason why we needed a mine was to, to try to create more metals and more materials for our base. But first things first, we finally managed to complete our dorm and we could now start to rest. Everyone was exhausted after two days of straight work and we decided that it was time for a nap. Six of us decided to crash on the bed and fall asleep almost instantly. We've decided that it was best to take turns sleeping and as we regain energy we, we then proceeded to maintaining our plants in the biodome and constructing new materials in the processing plant that was now also available. And as an engineer on duty I've decided that it was time for us to build a sick bay because some of us may get sick at some point and we don't want the disease to spread too quick. I've decided to construct the tunnel to the sick bay myself and was now headed back into the base. This was the third morning that we spent on this planet that we now refer to as New Mars or Marso Novum. And with the sick bay constructed and our base fully operational, this only gave us hope that maybe, just maybe, we might be able to survive the week on this planet. And this is day three and we're going to continue this in the next part. Thank you for watching and game you later. Bye-bye.